And so there's so many moments in our lives where we could be waiting on the Lord for an answer, for a deliverance, or for something. When we offer that up to Him, I would say you're in a little season of waiting on the Lord. Hi guys, my name is Naima. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to another episode of Bible and Coffee Time. Woo! Except it's almost 7 p.m. I don't have my coffee. I feel like God has just put on my heart this idea of waiting on God, waiting for the Lord. And that can look like so many things, and, and that's what I want to dive in to in this video, and also look at Psalm 40, and what that says about waiting on the Lord. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just diving a little deeper into what does waiting on the Lord actually look like, and what does that mean? It really is all about how we wait, because if we're waiting on God, and if we're like, God, when is this going to happen? God, come on, let's go. Like, are we really going to get what we need to get out of that situation or what we're meant to get out of it? We're in different situations right now and some of them are hard, some of them might seem tedious, but it's all about how you go through something because things are going to happen either way, bad and good things are going to happen. How are you going to go through it? What's your mindset going to be? I think it's important to just like kind of define what I'm talking about when I say wait on the Lord. I think the first thing that we have to consider when we think of the theme waiting on the Lord is as a Christian, you are not your own, you are bought with a price. So just thinking about your life and how much you should actually be in control of it. Because if you're a Christian, you believe God gave me this life and it's to glorify Him. Like, my life is not about me at all. And so there's so many moments in our lives where we could be waiting on the Lord for an answer, for a deliverance, or for something. And when we offer that up to Him, we I, I would say you're in it little season of waiting on the Lord and that means putting aside your preferences putting aside your desires and really humbling yourself going to God saying God I really want this but I know your way is better I don't want to be in control of it here you go but then also the other side of it is like even if it doesn't happen the way we thought or when we hoped it doesn't matter, we're not going to fall apart. In terms of like if you want a relationship, if you want a job, and if it doesn't happen, you're not going to be completely shattered. Like maybe you'll feel hurt or um, you'll feel sad, but it's like your hope is in Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. It's in God and his sovereignty and his grace and everything. And so we don't have to just go crazy if we don't get what we want. And so waiting on the Lord doesn't have to be stressful. In fact, I think the moment you offer something up to God and just give it to Him is like the most like stress relieving moment. It's like, this is off of my shoulders. Thank you, Jesus, for taking the weight off. I don't have to stress out about it. <laughs> like that's an amazing moment, I think, even though it's really hard sometimes giving up control and waiting on the Lord for something when you could easily go and grab it. So moving forward into the video in Psalms 40, it's kind of a moment of deliverance for David. And so we observe and we analyze David in how he waited on the Lord and what he did when he was so desperate for that deliverance. And through that, we learn more about God's character. So let's dive into Psalm 40. And I would encourage you to just meditate on this chapter alone for like a week maybe. I've been praying over this chapter. I've been like reading it so much. And it's so amazing. So let's start at verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. So, one of the qualities that you need for waiting on the Lord is patience. You probably were like, Naima, yeah, okay. When we think of patience, we think of just waiting, right? That's what patience is. It's just waiting. But the actual definition of patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. And the Lord inclined to him and heard his cry. Notice how David is crying. He's not just like, yeah, God, I need you. He is crying out to the Lord. God wants us to cry out to him when we're in pain and we're suffering. And he promised, like, we're going to go through things. We're going to th go through hard times. And the Lord wants us to cry out to him. And I feel like crying out to the Lord is just something so humbling. It's like, God, like, I don't know why this is happening, but I know it's for your glory. Just please help me. That is a moment where it takes so much, like, humbling yourself. And I think the Lord loves that. All right, verse two, we gotta speed this up, <laughs> okay. He drew me out from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. David feels like he was in this really dark place, 
and even in the darkest of places, God can pick you up and set your feet on a path that's secure. It doesn't mean the path isn't going to be difficult sometimes, but it does mean he's going to make your path steady. The thing that makes your step secure is not that God's going to make everything perfect for you. It's that you have a hope in God and that hope is unchanging. So you can be secure in that. It's not like, oh, I'm going to trust God because he's going to do all of this for my life. Like, you're going to trust God because you love the Lord and you and you delight in his law. I like this part. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. David waited patiently. God heard him. God pulled him out of the pit of destruction and out of the merry bog, right? And then he set his feet straight. So now, after all of these chapters of Psalms of like suffering, crying out to the Lord, God has given him hope. God has put a new song in David's mouth and it's a song of praise to God. It's not a song of, yeah, David, you got yourself out of that situation. Go ahead and give the glory to yourself. No, all the glory is going to God because it's a song of praise. Pause another second here. <laughs> it took David suffering and crying out to the Lord and going through all of this to create a new appreciation for God. And so now, now David is like, woo, God, like look what he did for me, right? And so now all of what David has gone through has become a testimony to God's goodness. And so that's why the second part of verse three, many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord because he has just become a testimony to others, which God will use to bring people to him. And that's why we, we always circle back to the point where as long as God gets the glory from your life. Because David had to go through a lot. He was in the pit of destruction, right? And it took all of that for him to get this new song. And now he's going to lead people to Jesus saying, look at what God did for me. Verse 4. Blesses the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O oh, Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. So see how like David is just really like, wow, God, I'm going to tell everyone. No one compares to you. You are amazing. It's not that I'm just going to tell people. I will proclaim it. Pro? lame okay verse six in sacrifice and offerings you have not delighted but you have given me an open ear and whenever it says but in psalms or proverbs i always circle it because it means there's a contrast but you have given me an open ear burnt offerings and sin offerings you have not required then i say behold i have come in the scroll of the book it is written i delight to do your will oh my god your law is written in my heart within my heart that might be my favorite verse of this whole thing i delight to do your will oh my god your law is within my heart god's will for us is just incredible but i think it's a lot of like denying yourself and it's all these things and so to say that you delight in god's will in god's design when sometimes it's hard to follow that path that's incredible and i like there you go conviction like how often do I complain about doing something for God? No, we should delight to do his will. Like it is a privilege and we should have his law written on our hearts and it's all over it and just love it. Verse nine, I have told the glad news of deliverance in the new congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips. As you know, Lord, I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I think this is huge. Um, let me keep reading. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. So I think that speaks about like when God does answer you, when God does deliver you, you shouldn't be silent. You need to tell everyone. And as you're waiting for God, that moment is going to come when he tells you something. He gives you a little bit more, right? And that is not a moment to be silent. That is a moment to rejoice and tell the entire congregation don't restrain your lips when God moves. Like, tell everyone. Just tell everyone. Be a testimony. Verse 11. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain mercy from me. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. For evils have encompassed me beyond number. My iniquities have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs on my head. My heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. 
Let those be put to shame and disappointed altogether who seek to snatch away my life. When you're chasing God, there are going to be things that come up in your life. There are going to be tests. There's going to be challenges. Intrusive thoughts are going to happen. The only thing that's not going to fail you is God being there for you. None of your friends maybe will pick up the phone. Like no one's going to be there except for God. Like God will never fail you. Even your own heart can be deceitful towards you. So let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, aha, aha. But may all who seek you and let's look up that word seek the seek is to search and find something you're not just gonna look once and say oh i didn't find it no you're gonna dig deep <laughs> if you're gonna search or seek you gotta dig deep verse 16 but may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you may those who love your salvation say continuously great is the lord like god is great no matter what god is great even if you're waiting for him right god is great even if he doesn't give you what you hope for, right? Because he's always doing something and he's always working all things together for your good. So even if you don't get that dream job, like great is the Lord. Even if this fails and this fails and that the great is the Lord, right? That is our hope and no matter what happens, God is working everything together for our good. And obviously like it's hard to see that sometimes, like especially there are those seasons where it's like, God, what are you doing? <laughs> but like, how dare we say that to him? You know, like, what? He's doing everything for us. Last verse. As for me, I am poor and needy. But the Lord, but <laughs> the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay. Oh my God. Amazing. Amazing. I think that first line in verse 17 as for me, I am poor and needy. I think it's so important, like, as you wait, recognizing your place. You are poor. You are needy. You are a sinner. Like, Jesus already paid the price. Like, God already sent his son, right? So, in reality, like, we don't deserve anything. <laughs> so, I'm editing this part of the video, and I realized maybe it came across a little harsh. I think it is really important to know your place when you come before God, especially God being so holy and blameless. I also did want to encourage you with Mark chapter 2 verse 17 and 16. So this is what it says, starting at the end of verse 16, um, when the disciples ask, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus heard it and said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. We are called to come before God being as holy and as blameless as possible. But obviously, we are sinners. I hope you're encouraged by that scripture because Jesus didn't come for the people who think, say they're perfect. Jesus came for the sinners. And there you go. Like, we are washed clean. Like, when we, when we repent and when we ask for forgiveness, we're washed clean. So hopefully you can be encouraged by that and um, you don't take what I was saying out of context because I don't want to discourage you. But I think it's also important to really realize our place before we come before God. <laughs> so sometimes I think a mistake that we've all made or I've made a ton is going to God with this kind of prideful attitude where it's like, God, where is this? Um... God, what do you like? Come on, let's let's move this along, right? That's honestly just the most prideful thing to do because you really don't deserve anything. So if you're going to God, you gotta know your place. You gotta humble yourself and start praying. Like get on your knees, cry to the Lord, and recognize you are poor, you are needy, and you are a sinner. But guess what? God has chosen you. God loves you, and God has fearfully and wonderfully made you. You are here not by accident. It is definitely not an accident because our God is perfect and he does not make mistakes. Returning back to the main idea of this video and waiting on the Lord, you can read a lot of Psalms leading up to Psalms 40 and truly see the characteristics of a patient servant. Like even through waiting, David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continuously in my mouth. That's Psalms 34. Like if you read up to it, you can see that in the midst of David feeling destruction, David feeling hopeless, waiting on the Lord was him praising the Lord and him being patient 
and him going to the Lord humbly. So, okay, what does it take to wait on the Lord? Big question. And you probably like have come up with things in your own head too. And obviously like you might think of things that I don't think about, comment them, I don't know. Um, but for me, what comes to my mind is patience, endurance. I think it's important to realize like Sometimes things are going to take longer, but God is not going to give you something you're not ready for. We serve a very just God, and he's not going to give you this perfect thing if you're not ready for it. No, he's going to be patient with you. He's going to season you up, and that might hurt. That might take waiting. It just takes a lot of endurance. I think waiting on the Lord also involves crying out to God when you feel hopeless, when you're feeling discouraged. Also, also, I was reading Mark, and Mark chapter 12 verses 29 through 30 and it says and you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength it takes strength to love the lord it takes strength to wait on the lord and that strength is not going to come from you or self-help books or anything it's going to come from the lord i think that's like my main prayer too it's like god please help me give me patience give me strength and just help me to trust in you because ultimately that's what it comes down to. It comes down to if you trust the Lord and if you don't, I think trust is going to build over time. Trust is going to build over you getting in the word and you praying. I'm really not trying to say that trusting the Lord is always easy, especially when it looks like everything's going wrong. And that's like one of my main prayers recently is God help me to trust you. Um, help my own belief. Please be patient with yourself like if you are waiting on something and if it's hard and maybe all your friends are doing something and you're waiting and you're waiting and it looks like okay God I'm waiting like okay even in the midst of struggle even in the midst of chaos like we can still wait on the Lord and have confidence in what he's done and just confidence that he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Amen. You know what can I just tell you something else? The most pain to my knowledge, to my experience, comes when you actually don't wait on the Lord. And when we try to take something into our own hands and we think, oh yeah, I got this. I can do this. That's fine. I'll do it right now. I don't have to wait. That's when the pain comes. I could talk about this for another hour. We can dive so much deeper into this. Hopefully this was an encouragement to you. I definitely, like, as I'm talking, I'm talking to myself. Like, I hope you know. Let me pray for you before you leave. Also, can you please pray for me that for my channel that God would just encourage me and like help me through editing, through planning and just, you know, you know. God, thank you so much for just giving us your word, for just revealing so much to us. And thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. Uh, I pray for this person watching. I just thank you because they're just diving into the word that they want to know you. I pray that you would just put that greater desire to know you in their hearts, that they would not get enough of you, that their hearts would faint for you, that they would thirst for you, that they would just want to give you everything. I just pray that we would just just help us please to wait for you and to trust that you have something so much better waiting for us and just help us to give up control and just love you more than than anything else in the world um yeah i just pray for faith that you would just help them to have a firm foundation and that they would just build up from that and just pray that you would be with them through those lonely nights and through those hard times that they would be able to look up and just feel your love just help them to feel your love and just pray that this was really an encouragement and i pray that you would help me when editing and just to remove things that i said that weren't of you and amplify things that i said that you really want them to hear um and i just thank you so much we love you in jesus name amen Make sure to subscribe. I make faith related and lifestyle videos and like vlogs. So I would love it if you stuck around. St stuck around. <laughs> Have a great day. Jesus loves you. And I love you. And.